Regarding the issue of music, the first thing that we hear from some of these imams is that music's everywhere. You know, how are you supposed to live in America if you're going to be walking on the mall with ear clogs and, you know, music is, you know, you're at the dental office and, you know, music's everywhere. So to be a good Muslim, do I got to put corks in my ear? Well, the fact of the matter is haram is everywhere. I mean, people that are not dressed appropriately are everywhere. Like if you go drive down the freeway, you're going to see a billboard and it's going to have a woman in not proper clothing or a man in them speedos or whatever. And, and it's true, like, like people not being dressed properly are everywhere. Music is everywhere. But that doesn't make it halal. I mean, be clear, alcohol is everywhere, right? You go to work sometimes, people are drinking. You go to a park, people are drinking. That doesn't make it halal. Now, the difference is, what are you engaging in? If you're driving and there's a billboard, you'll see it. Obviously, you're driving. You're not going to close your eyes and drive to be a good Muslim and crash your car. But you're not staring at it. That's not what you're doing. You see, you, you keep going your path. You, you go to a website to fill out a form and they got a woman that's not dressed you know, I mean, appropriate dress for us is full covering. I don't mean bikini. I mean, like if a woman's, yeah, any, anything of hers is showing from the aura of a woman, then this is not appropriate. So even if she's just wearing like a business suit, that's not appropriate for us as Muslims, right? So you're filling out a form, you're going to see those pictures on websites of, of men and women and so on. But that's not your sin because you're not going for that reason, Right? If you walk into an elevator and music's playing, that's not your intention. You're not doing that. It's a very scary thing when an imam, a scholar, says, well, music's everywhere, so, you know, what do you do, right? Well, that's very different from walking into a dentist's office and there's music playing and you going to, uh, you know, Apple Music or what's that other... uh, Spotify and downloading Ice Cube or Dre or whatever and, and rocking and yeah, music's halal. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean the imams that are, that are putting this stuff out, they're not thinking through the effect they're having on the youth either. When you open that door, then understand you're saying music's halal. You're not saying that, oh, being in an office where music's playing is not your responsibility, which is correct because you didn't go there for that. You're saying you go to a Nirvana concert. I'm old, sorry. You know my my references to music are not going to be new. You know, and and you're out there buying tickets and you're rocking out there. Well, that's halal then. Right? No, uh, this is not a a dalil in the Sharia that oh, if music's everywhere, that means it's halal. No, you do your best to stay away from what is haram. You don't go to a dentist's office to listen to music. It's not a concert. You don't go into an elevator and download music to play it. Then that's not your sin. And whatever of that you take, then we ask Allah to forgive us because that's not our intention. That's very different from saying something is halal. Tayyib. So if something being prevalent doesn't make it halal or haram, what does make it halal or haram? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, when he gives us an order, when the Prophet alayhi salatu salam in Sahih Ahadith tells us something, when the Sahaba radiyanhum tell us about something, then those are adilla, those are evidences for halal and haram. Now, before I get into the evidences, and I'm not going to go over all that I have collected because this is not the place to go into that depth. I'm going to go very briefly and I'm going to focus mostly on the Quran itself today. Before I go there, I do want to make a few points. I understand many people listen to music. I don't live in a vacuum. I know. But understand that something, even if it's prevalent amongst Muslims, does not make it halal. Many people watch TV shows. Muslims. They watch TV shows that have women that are not dressed according to the Sharia. I mean, they're not full niqab. Right? Right? that has music in the background and so on. And if, if you are struggling with that, it's, it's your struggle. Don't worry. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Get away from it. If, you're, if you have this issue where you like music and you love to listen to it, I'm not saying you're kafir or something. No. But what I'm saying is, don't justify your sin. It's a very important principle. It's one thing to sin 
and ask Allah for forgiveness. And it's another thing to try to make that sin halal. You understand the difference? All of us, we have mistakes. In the Sharia, every ibadah is a bid'ah until you have dalil to say that it's from the sunnah. So when we say music is not permissible, we have to present evidence. It's not just, I don't like it, or my shaykh said, no. So in the Quran, in Surah Luqman, and I'm going to present here with the scans from the books that I mentioned. Why? Too many imams and too many a'imma say things without evidence. They'll just say it. And because they're respected, people will take it. I don't want you to take my opinion for me. I'm a nobody. I'm not some, I'm an authority. I want you to see the evidences. And these are all books from my own personal library. And I took these pictures myself. You can see they're not well taken. And I scanned them so you can see the evidences. And inshallah, whoever wants these pictures can take them. We'll share them with you. So then when you educate people, you do it with adillah. You don't say... Uthman said, who's Uthman? You will say, Allah said, and the ulama of Islam in their books said, and these are the evidences. Tafsir ibn Kathir, one of the best known, well-respected tafsir of the Quran. Ibn Kathir is well known. If you study Quran and tafsir, Ibn Kathir is well known. This is Dar ibn Jawzi's print. This is as well known, those of you that are tullab ilm, this is one of the best works on the takhrij, on the checking of a hadith as printed with tafsir ibn Kathir. And I have a video that talks about this print by itself. But I wanted to show this from Surah Luqman where it talks about من الناس من يشتري له الحديث From the people that are those who buy useless amusement. That, that distractive amusement, that, that vain talk to try to misguide people. Now, this is in Surah Luqman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in the Quran. This is not something that yani, is from a scholar or something. But now, what is lahul hadith? What does it mean that useless talk or that, that useless amusement? What is the meaning of that ayah? We cannot give our own meaning to the Quran. We cannot say, in my opinion, it means this. Who are you? We go back to what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that were present when these ayat were revealed said about these ayat. And from this, as you can see from your screen, we have the report that Imam Ibn Kathir brings. And I'm going to focus on this one here that he brings from Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. And he brings the entire chain of narrations here. And he says that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Ghina, Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illahu. And he repeated this three times. He swore. Who, who is this? Huh? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Who is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud? He is a Sahabi or no? Allah, man, you guys all, nobody knows Abdullah ibn Mas'ud Sahabi? Respond. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is the one that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, go take the Qur'an from him. Yeah. Go and learn the Qur'an from him. He is the one that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained about his understanding and his recitation of the Qur'an. So what does Abdullah ibn Mas'ud say with three times taking qasam? On Allah, that the meaning of this ayah, what Allah is forbidding you from, is music. See? Now again, this is a summarized. I have scanned the other page where Imam Ibn Kathir also mentions the rawayat from others like Amr ibn Ali. And this is a sanad that goes all the way to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud as well. Again, and from others. And as you can see on the bottom... In the takhrij, in the, in the checking of the hadith that's done on Tafsir ibn Kathir, it mentions that Tabari has mentioned this with his sanad. Al-Hakim, Imam Al-Hakim, Nisaburi, the one who wrote Mustadrak ala Sahi'ain, he mentioned this, and he mentioned that it was authenticated by him, by Al-Hakim, said this hadith is sahih. 
And a dhahabi, Imam al dhahabi who did the checking on Al-Hakim, also said that it was Sahih. And it mentions all the way down to where it says that some graded it to be Hassan. Again, a reliable narration. But now, now, we have one of our brothers, and I'm again, I'm, I'm not mentioning names because this is not about personalities, rather about the issues, who, who made a video saying that he doesn't have much knowledge of hadith. He begins with that. And then he goes on to say that the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas, not the one of Abdullah ibn Masood, he didn't even mention this, has a drunk in the chain. That's very interesting. And I have reached out to the brother. Sheikh Karim is a witness and our brother Eddie is a witness. And I've repeatedly asked the brother that with respect to discuss this issue with me offline. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. And show me who's a drunk in that sanad. And I will show you the asaneed. Imam al-Hakim, al-Dahabi, these experts of hadith from the past, and we'll talk about present day scholars as well, reviewed these asaneed and said that there is no doubt to their authenticity. And if you make a claim like that, you need to bring evidence. You need to give the name of which rawi. Rather, these ahadith are not just mentioned through singular chains. Pay attention to what I'm saying. One of the mistakes some of our brothers make, and they copy this usually from others, is they take a single chain, and they find some criticism by some scholar of hadith, and they disregard the hadith. Not realizing that there are multiple chains to these ahadith. This is an amazing work on tafsir. It's a mawsu'a tafsir mathur. It's a collection that's been done recently. And this is from my library at home. What they did is they went through the books of hadith and the books that are especially a hadith on tafsir. And the books of tafsir that are mathur, that rely on the author. And they collected all those together. So when you look up an ayah, you can find all the narrations that are from the Rasul والسلام, or Sahaba about an ayah. There are athar, there are actual narrations. You will see on your right, regarding this ayah, and lahu al-hadith, and the meaning of it, there is the narration from Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma. Now, the first narration I presented was from who? Don't confuse them. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Who said, what about this ayah? What does it mean? Music. This is Abdullah ibn Abbas now. Who is Abdullah ibn Abbas? The cousin of the Prophet ﷺ. What, what else about him? The Prophet ﷺ made dua for him that Allah gives him the understanding of what? Wahi, of the Qur'an. And praised his understanding. I want you to pay attention because if somebody says Ibn Hazm said or somebody says Sheikh Fulan said we're not here to, to compare between we're talking about those Sahaba that Rasul والسلام, taught them the tafsir and told us to take the tafsir from them to understand the Quran from them Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu is the one that Umar ibn Khattab radiyan, would sit him amongst the senior Sahaba even though he was very young and he would ask questions to show the senior sahaba how deep his knowledge of the Qur'an is. And those of you that know, you know about his tafsir of Idaja Nasrullah wal Fatih and how he understood it deeper than others. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa praised his understanding and made dua for him. Here, not, do we, not only in one chain, if you look up on the right hand side, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, Seventh, all those chains independently, through independent chains, go back to Abdullah ibn Abbas and the reference to which books that are right there as well, that all mention that this is music. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, separate. Abdullah ibn Abbas, separate. Now where is the drunk? <laughs> Again, we're not, this, this is out of love. For our brother, that we've kept our mouth shut with his name, because we're not here to cause fitin. We're here to clarify the evidences. And I have sent all these to the brother. Shaykh Karim, you're my witness. And repeatedly I asked the brother, if he can talk offline, and he has turned down that offer. And even though we had a timeline, we've delayed it, just because we are not people of fitin. We are people of adilla, of evidences.